Our next speaker is Matthew Clausen. He is a Penn State graduate in mechanical engineering and has 30 years experience in glass fabrication at PPG Industries Incorporated. He has experience in process engineering aircraft transparencies, automotive and automotive bulletproof glazing, and impact protective glass fabrication, as well as project equipment engineering of automotive glass fabrication. He's also an engineering student mentor. Matt will be talking to us today about trends in automotive glass fabrication. Good morning, hi to y'all. I thought I'd give Dave a better introduction since he's from Texas, I'm not, I'm, I'm a Hoosier, so I thought I'd help out there. Uh, my background has been in engineering in the glass fabrication, uh, strictly engineering, not sales, but over the years we have to get prepared for what the salesmen are promising the automotive people. Yeah, we can do that, and it gets back to us, and you know, we never said that, so a lot of what you see in the cars, uh, in the glass manufacturing at the time of the bid, it uh, wasn't necessarily uh, happening in the uh, in the fabrication plant. So today I'd like just to review with you the trends that I see uh, happening in the uh, automotive glass uh, environment and, and uh, ask questions afterward. The main design philosophy for the automotive people is they would like to get to the point where they can build the car to the customer's specifications, period. They'd like to make it such that it's a, uh, uh, boy, I must be pushing a button somewhere. There we go. They'd like to get to the point where it's a five-day time frame from uh, the order from the customer to the time the car is delivered. Uh, in addition to that, they'd like to be able to expand your ability to customize the car. And as Ken talked about in the paints, uh, different colors and stuff, the uh, color changes for the glass will also be one of the options that uh, you may be able to do in the future. Uh, one of the main, uh, whoops, missed a slide, I think. There we go, sorry, I must be uh, hitting the buttons. I'd like to cover uh, the trends which I just went over, the future in the glass design, both for size and shape, the configuration, the attributes of the glass you'll see in cars in the future, uh, some of the business factors affecting the automotive glass business, uh, some fabrication issues, and uh, an alternate to glass. The size, basically the size of the glass is gonna become larger. The styling for aerodynamics while maintaining the cabin size will render the windshield and the backlights to flare out at the bottom, which makes the plate longer or larger. In addition, the windshields and the back windows are gonna start being blended into the roof line for aerodynamics and aesthetics purposes. And uh, last but not least, uh, the sunroof that you've got today may be morphed into the entire roof of the car. Some of the cars nowadays do have strips of glass going clear from the front to the back. I think the new Mustang, which we've started grinding glass on earlier this year, uh, has got two strips for the sunroof that goes the full length of the roof, so you will start seeing more roofs completely made out of glass. Uh, they'd like to design for reduction of blind spots, the big A-post pillar it's called in the front of the uh, car. They like to make the windshields wrap around, move that pillar back so you have a better view of what's going on up front. In addition, the back window, same thing. It's called the C-pillar. They like to move the C-pillar further around the side so when you look around, either in your rearview mirror or turn your head, you won't have this big uh, blind spot. The tolerances for all these shapes and sizes continue to tighten. The uh, manufacturers keep wanting to uh, enhance the look of the car by getting rid of a whole bunch of the uh, plastic clips that go on the sides of the window. So uh, you're gonna see uh, the elimination of trim, and we have to build the glass and take it right up to the edge of the sheet metal, and that causes some fabrication problems too deep to get into right here. Um, as far as the shape, uh, they all go to complex bend. In the past, windshields used to be basically cone-shaped. Now they're gonna be cone with the wrap that I was mentioning earlier. Side windows are almost primarily cylindrical. They'll be compound bend, both in the uh, horizontal and the vertical axes. Back windows, pretty much the same. It, they primarily were flat and cylindrical, and they'll go to complex bend. Uh, in the past, uh, I call it the amoeba shape. Uh, I've seen uh, pieces of glass go down the line. I swear to you, it looks like an amoeba. There's not a straight section on the glass. 
makes it difficult to load the line, which edge do we use so we can get it in the press correctly so that the shape, when it gets pressed out, looks correct. Uh, the, I must be hitting a button here, sorry. Uh, in addition, part of the cutouts in the glass is to address the uh, components within the door, the motorized uh, components and the cranking devices. Um, uh, the tolerance for the, I already covered that. I must be hitting about wrong, sorry. Um, next slide. Configuration. Most of the glass uh, it will be laminated. Uh, currently, right now, your windshield is laminated. It's basically a 2.1 millimeter piece of glass, a 30 thousandths layer of polyvinyl butyrol, and a second piece of glass, 2.1 millimeter. They will most likely go to thinner glass to reduce weight, which will save gas, reduce air pollution. Uh, there'll also be some more color selection with the glass itself. Right now, uh, the primary plants, and the primary plants are the plants that take the silica sand and melt it and make the glass. You can see bronze, you can see grays, you can see light green, a dark green. Uh, the Europeans like a blue tint and obviously clear. Uh, I believe in the future those colors will expand to kind of match the painting issues that Kim was talking about, to match the color of the car. They would like to have the glass match that color. Most of the coatings are going on right now are to address the infrared and uh, ultraviolet light. Uh, as Ken was talking, trying to cool down the interior of the car. The glass uh, now has coatings that will reflect almost 95% of the UV and the uh, infrared uh, wavelength light. Uh, antennas can also be incorporated into the coatings from a process perspective. Uh, you just lay a mask over the plate as the sputtering process is occurring, and at the end, you take the mask off and you have a shape of an antenna, both for phone, radio, and or satellite reception. Heads-up displays uh, will, <clears throat> uh, sorry, 42-volt. Um, 42-volt uh, was supposed to be adopted by the automotive industry uh, for the 2007 model year. Uh, they're a little bit behind, needless to say. At that point, uh, the coatings that we're putting on the glass now will be able to be electrified and you'll have basically instantaneous defog and defrost capabilities on your windshields and backlights and the side lights if you have laminated side lights. Uh, aircraft does that now because they run at 60 to 80 volts. Cars at 12 volts, you'd have to pump too much current in and uh, it won't work. In addition, you'll have uh, what's called electrochromic coatings put on uh, your sun roof or the roof that might be the, in the glass uh, roof. You'll be able to turn a dial on your dash and you can make the roof go from opaque to clear. But we need higher voltage in order to be able to do that. Uh, the vinyl in the uh, glass is uh, most likely, almost always, polyvinyl butyrol. They've come up with what's called acoustical vinyl now. It's a softer vinyl, has more plasticizer in it, which causes problems from a process perspective, but it helps uh, deaden the sound of the car, keeping the cabin a lot quieter. Uh, They've also got a heads-up display in which they embed a wire mesh, but uh, it allows the driver to keep his eyes on the road, much like the fighter pilots can keep their eyes forward as they're flying. It's the same uh, basic technology. Um, the vinyl itself can be colored. Uh, the current sunshade that's in the top of the window in some of your cars, that's a dye that's actually in the vinyl. It's not painted on it as a, as a glass uh, piece. So they can color the, the, the vinyl, and so in the future, if you want pink side windows, a green windshield, and a uh, purple back window, you could do that if you want. So it could make the car very unique. It may help also trace the guy if it's obviously the, the uh, glass is pink and you're looking at pink shards and the car's got pink glass, it might help uh, identify that person. Vinyl it can come with heat reduction uh, properties. It helps the... Uh, keeps the sunlight from getting to the seats in the interior of the car, but it still heats up the vinyl and windshield and re-radiates the heat to the interior. So that from a glass manufacturing perspective, the coatings we put on the glass are superior to, and they reflect most of the heat as opposed to absorbing it. I've hit this button again. Sorry. Tempered glass will still be around. It's cheaper to make than laminated glass. So it'll probably go on the 
uh, cheaper uh, cars. I'm sorry, the more cost-effective cars, lower-end cars. <laughs> I'm going to be politically correct here. Uh, it'll most likely be thinner, uh, for, again, to save weight. Uh, the problem with thinning down the glass from a, pres from a uh, fabrication perspective, I'm moving something that's moving this thing. Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, from the, yeah, the weight. Glass is fairly heavy, so any, thick, any thickness changes uh, can help it out. Uh, we still have to temper it, so the thinner you go, the more horsepower you need in blowers. Right now we've got uh, four to 600 horsepower blowers used to try to cool the glass down on the surface to get the temper levels that the government requires. Uh, in research, we've even hitched up jet engines to use the exhausted jet engines because we need that much volume and pressure to try to temper thin glass. Uh, it'll be coated much like the uh, uh, laminated glass will to reflect light. And again, it'll probably have more color possibilities. And then again, that's a primary plant issue. Will the primary plants get the push big enough from the automotive uh, makers that you know, they want more colors? And that may be a, a future option for you. The very consistent mean machine operations from run to run, all the parameters are saved. Um, the extensive use of visually guided robots. I've installed probably four or five in the last two or three years. The amoeba shapes I was telling you about, we could not get people to load the lines consistently because there's no reference line to use or to give them to locate the glass. And so now we've got cameras taking pictures of the plate. The robot picks it up, sticks it on the line, and, and all is fine. These robots, and these are readily available. We, we use primarily Fanuc. Uh, the last batch of robots I installed were accurate down to 0.08 millimeters, which is roughly three thousandths. And the glass positioning tolerance right now is at around 60 thousandths. So we've got a little bit of room to go before the auto manufacturers tighten that up, and I don't know what we'll do at that point. Um, the cost-effective vision systems can see quite easily down to two thousandths of an inch. And when I say cost-effective, cheap, sorry, cost-effective, uh, $2,500 camera and the software can get you down to that level. And if you want to go up to the next step, I think it's around 10 grand. But the CCD chip is so large, you almost need a Cray computer to crunch the numbers in a 10 to 11 second cycle time. So we can pitch the glass or save it, depending on whether or not the glass is good or not. Um, sorry. Um, from a vision perspective, we're now entering a, uh, the full vision analysis or, or inspection of the glass. It is far more objective than the human being, uh, and it does not miss the small out effect defects. In fact, nine times out of 10, we have to dummy down the vision system because it's seeing too much. It shuts the line down so much that management told engineering, turn the things off, but I didn't say that. Uh, we have found that our suppliers, the suppliers are artwork, which was God, basically. When you're making a screen product, the, sc the screen is God, that you just make it to whatever the screen comes in. We found the screen manufacturers were not making it consistent. The vision told us, and when we showed them the data, they finally went, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sorry. So vision is, is a very big part of, of uh, manufacturing for, for every business, not just glass. Primary glass variation. Um, yes, it does vary from run to run. If you get glass that was made in June, it will be different than glass that was made in July and August, and it'll be really bad come December uh, because the primary plants, uh, at least for PPG, were mostly located in a cold country, and if somebody leaves a door open, that can change the anneal of the glass, which can change how the glass uh, cuts and bends on the line. We also found that the glass varies within the production run. We kind of knew that, but we couldn't prove it until we got the computer equipment that showed them the gradual change in the glass as we were receiving it. The my next uh, item here is a little wordy. Basically, the fabrication operations, we had to load our lines in the sequential order that it was produced from the primary plants. That's how much variability we were seeing just in our process in order to maintain the size and bend specifications, which are somewhere in the order of plus or minus a half a millimeter for bend of a piece of glass that's this big and they want that one spot within a half a millimeter or so, you have to really have control of what's going on. The 
I can't tell you if it's a chemistry difference or if it's just an anneal difference. I wish I could give you that you know, uh, information. It might help uh, uh, track glass or trace it chemically. Um, we've tried not to run it in, in chronological order, but uh, it, it renders the process. Uh, uh, we, we got our reject rates just skyrocket. So just to give you an idea is that the glass does change. We do recognize that it does change. And uh, uh, it's the one slide uh, from one of our previous speakers says, one thing is constant is change. So uh, glass is no different. Some of the attributes of the future glass uh, safety, if we all go to side lights that are laminated, the ejection, people getting thrown from a car in a rollover, uh, the National Highway Transportation uh, Administration had estimated easily 1,000 lives could be saved a year if all the cars came with laminated side windows. Brother Grease will drop uh, for a while that there was a lot of smash and dash going on. Uh, guy would walk up with a crowbar, smash the window, take the purse, the camera, whatever was laying in the car. At least with laminated glass, it just cracks, and he has to now get it out of the way. If it's held correctly in the, in the door, it'll take him a little while to get that uh, the, the piece of glass out of the way. Heads-up display from a driver's attention perspective. It allows you to keep your eyes on the road, and they will flash up any car problems that may occur. So hopefully that will uh, reduce some accidents for people looking down to adjust the stereo or look at whatever uh, idiot light might be flashing at them. And of course, laminated glass still protects from uh, impact from debris on the road, rocks and stones. I've got here, except for high-speed bird impacts. Um, a couple years ago, I was called in the plant manager's office, and it turns out that the BMW owner in, in Stuttgart, Germany, pulled into his dealership, and he was mad as a hornet. There was a three-inch diameter hole in the passenger side of the windshield, and there was a five-pound bird sitting in the passenger seat, and he didn't look too happy either. He was looking to sue. He was, you know, he bought the BMW 7 Series, which can cruise at, at the Autobahn's speed limit of 150 kilometers an hour. Of course, they ask him, are you speeding? No. All right. So I was asked to correlate our safety tests versus what happened in this particular case uh, to test the integrity. And we do it on a daily basis, on a shift basis. A five-pound ball is dropped 12 feet. Uh, onto a one-foot square piece of glass. If it holds the ball, you've passed. Uh, the ball gets to roughly 27 miles an hour before it hits the plate. And this is a engineering largo, this uh, jargon. This is a kinetic energy problem, one-half mv squared for all those who took physics. Oh, my god, I don't want to hear that formula. Uh, so it's the square of the velocity, 136 miles an hour squared versus 27 squared. It ends up being a factor of safety of 25 or a difference of 25 times the amount of energy that that bird hit that windshield versus federal standards. So I told the plant manager to tell the owner, call up our Huntsville plant, they'll get him a bulletproof windshield, it'll bounce right off. <laughs> he didn't see the humor in that. So. Uh, Next time you're out in, on the Autobahn in Germany, just kind of watch out for the birds. It, it, it could hurt. Um, improved driver comfort with the coated glass radiating the uh, ultraviolet and uh, uh, infrared light, along with the paint that uh, Ken is indicating that paint people are doing. You'll have cooler cabin temperatures. Uh, that will reduce the load in the air conditioning, which then you don't need as large of air conditioner, and it won't run as often, save gas, the whole bit. Uh, less road noise will occur from the acoustical vinyl. Uh, and the larger field of view, as I mentioned earlier, they're trying to get larger and larger and more and more glass so it's easier to see. There is a green value in the coatings, uh, both for paint and for glass also. Uh, it, as I mentioned before, it reduces the air conditioning load. The California Air Reserve Board just passed a law a couple weeks ago mandating that the all windshields sold in California, and I believe it's 2011 or maybe 2012 build year, uh, will have or are required to have uh, reflective coatings on them to reduce air conditioning loads, save gas, and reduce pollution. Um, someday I'll figure out how to use this thing. Um, there is an alternative to glass, polycarbonates. Uh, they're currently used in uh, sunroofs, headlights, and uh, side windows. There are major advantages. They're half the weight of glass. 
And the easiest thing, the, the one thing the auto manufacturers go to is try to reduce weight in a car. It's the easiest way to save gas. Uh, polycarbons can come in clear or colored. Again, I was talking about the color changes, and Ken had talked about the color varieties that allows the customer to maybe custom make, uh, customize his car. Uh, can be formed in very highly complex shapes versus glass. Glass doesn't like to get bent too fast, too quick. It tends to break and you have nothing left. Uh, it is very high impact resistant. In fact, it's the final uh, composite laminate in bulletproof glass. It's actually the polycarb that catches it. Uh, the main disadvantage is its abrasion resistance isn't very good, uh, and it does craze with time. Sunlight will uh, craze the polycarbonate. They can put coatings on it to uh, slow it down, but it will eventually craze. Perhaps some of you have already had to pay for front headlights that kind of fogged over. Well, that's the crazing that the polycarb will do after so much time in the sun. To summarize, what I see is the trends in automotive glass. Uh, there will be more of it. Uh, to expand the, the visual opening of the, of the, in the cabin. More colors to choose from, both from the glass perspective and or the vinyl for those laminated pieces. They will most likely be coated because it, uh, they've proven it does reduce the uh, load for the air conditioning. Uh, when we go to 42 volts, if they ever get to that stage, uh, now you'll be able to electrify the, the coatings and you'll have very quick defrost and, and defog capabilities. You'll have the electrochromic uh, sunroofs. You can turn it on or off, opaque or clear. Uh, more laminated glass on the side lights, as I mentioned earlier, from a safety perspective, it'll keep you in the car if you're in a rollover and you're not wearing your belt. And it'll keep it quiet. Heads-up display should keep your eyes on the road. Again, if I ever learn to use this. And polycarbonates, you may, they may still replace glass in certain areas because they are such a weight reduction and easily formed versus glass. Any questions? Speak loudly, I'm half deaf. 30 years in the plan has, has taken its toll. Um, are there any current trends to the UV and IR coatings that are used in, uh, in the glass? Any new materials that are being used? Uh, try that one more time, sir. Are there any new materials being used for the UV and IR coatings uh, on the glass? The materials that are used, uh, now one of the issues for windshields, you still got to be able to see through it. We've all, we're all aware of mirror glass that you can see through one way but not the other. Uh, in, in PPG's uh, uh, reflective coatings, the silver is what is the primary reflectant. They use zinc. Uh, clear coat to sputter along with the aluminum with silver. It doesn't look colored. You've probably seen some Ford glass out there that has a uh, slight red coat to the windshield. You can make the glass look any color you want, but we were trying to go for clear so you can't tell that it's got a, a coating on it. But to answer your question, it's primarily silver. It's what's used for the reflective uh, aspects. Uh, yeah, how thick are these coatings, the UV and IR coatings? Are they very thick? Speakers are facing this way. I'm, try that again. How thick are the uh, coatings, the UV and IR coatings? Are they how thick are they? Uh, they're a couple nanometers thick. Uh, they're applied in, in, at the atomic level, if you will. Uh, and we can change that thickness to select which uh, wavelengths of UV and IR we'd like to uh, reduce. Are you aware of any ideas of how we could go about detecting whether those are there in the laboratory? I'm, I'm sorry, the speakers, I can't hear them. <laughs> are you aware of any uh, ideas of how we could go detecting that in the laboratory? Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not an expert in that particular area. Sorry.